Arthur was enjoying his new home along the coastal run very much. His line runs along sandy beaches and ends at the fishing village where Arthur most loved to be. The fishermen were so fond of the big red engine that they had taken to calling him Arthur the Seaside Engine, which made Arthur very pleased with himself. Also fond of Arthur were Duck, Oliver and the Scottish Twins, whose line runs with Arthur's for a long stretch up the coast. They still talk about when Arthur accidentally ran into the back of Duck's train. Donald and Douglas could never let him forget it. With the title Seaside Engine, best be glad it was fruit instead of fish in your funnel, they teased. One day, Arthur was waiting at the station for Oliver and his train to pass. He was on his way to the harbour with the fish for the market. A friendly whistle came from the distance. Beep beep! Hello Mr. Seaside Engine, Oliver tooted cheerfully. I trust that you'll keep your trucks behind you instead of ahead of you this time. It would be a shame if you crashed into Duck again. I'm just glad it wasn't you, Oliver. I would be horrified if I'd heard your smart brake ban. Toad beamed. Oh, Mr. Arthur, you are too kind. Don't listen to Mr. Oliver. He fell into a turntable well not long after we arrived. Oliver grimaced in embarrassment. You don't say. Perhaps we both should look where we're going from now on, Arthur chuckled. Toad is a little chatty sometimes and says things he doesn't mean, Oliver said, giving his brake man a stern look. And he also tore Scruffy to bits in the yard not long after. He's really quite something to behold. Ever faithful, Toad is, Oliver sighed, rolling his eyes. Arthur laughed and left for his train. It must be nice to have one's own brake van. I wish I did sometimes to keep the trucks in order, Arthur said to his driver. Ha, ah, replied his driver, that takes a special kind of bond, and a special bond takes time to make. For now, any brake van is as good as another. All the same, Arthur could not stop thinking about brake vans. When he arrived at the harbour, he set down his vans and ran to the siding to rest while the fish was being unloaded before taking the empties back. He had only just shut his eyes when he heard a voice mutter from the siding next to him. Arthur thought he must be dreaming, but the voice came again. He looked over and saw an old brake van staring back at him. Hello, the brake van said. Are you from the Little Western? No, but my line runs by there. Why? I used to work with Donald and Douglas many years ago, he said sadly. I do wish I could see them again. Arthur remembered what his driver had said about special bonds and smiled. You were there, Brake Van, weren't you? Arthur said. In a matter of speaking, I... Of course I'll take you to them. They'll be delighted to see you and rekindle your special bond. This was not exactly what the van had in mind, but before he knew it, he had been exchanged for Arthur's other Brake Van, and when the vans were empty, they set out for the Little Western. You know, you are too kind to do this, but I must insist that... Think nothing of it, Arthur said, beaming. After all, who am I to get in the way of a special bond? The van felt very nervous. He had not forgotten what had happened when he last met Donald Douglas. Later that afternoon, Arthur waited impatiently in the yard with the brake band waiting for Donald and Douglas to return from their seaside excursion. Oh, they'll be so excited to see you! The van was not so sure. Soon the Scottish twins pulled into the yard, and when they saw the brake van, they were speechless. Aren't you happy to see your old brake van? Arthur said gaily. Hey! said Donald. How? spluttered Douglas. Where did you find that pile of scrap metal? they shouted. Arthur was confused. I thought he was your brake van. He said he wanted to come see you. Ah, break down indeed, Douglas seethed. Once a muckle nuisance, always a muckle nuisance. He can't sneer at us like he once did. Arthur looked to the van. 
Is this true? The brake man looked ashamed. I was once a terror to Donald and Douglas. I was young and foolish then, but when I had my accident I saw sense. They were able to repair me, but I promise that I am a change brake van. Ah! The twins snorted. I, I wanted to see you again to tell you I'm sorry. Donald and Douglas were surprised. You mean you came all the way here just to tell us you're sorry? I've waited years to tell you, but I've been away on the main line and no one would listen to me. But this fine engine did. He looked appreciatively at Arthur. Well, thank you to both of ye, Donald said, smiling. It has taken us a long time to get over all that mess, but we forgive ye, Donald added, but suddenly looked concerned. We better get you back to the main line if that's where you're stationed. No, said Arthur, he'll stay with me. What's that? Donald smirked. I need a good brake van to help keep my trucks in order, said Arthur, and it seems that this van wants to help and make things right. Then why not let him? The twins looked at each other and then grinned. If you be needing a brake van, then I reckon he's yours. The brake van beamed. From then on, Arthur and the brake van ran up and down the seaside together. The brake van was true to his word and did a wonderful job keeping the trucks in line on the long journey to and from the harbour. He sees Donald and Douglas from time to time, and he never forgets to show appreciation for the twins' forgiveness and for Arthur's kindness.